do you offer the building? I think of it as for many people to be talk to the service audience. Let's start with the case scenarios. Let's start, I think, the case of Mrs. A and Mrs. B. Both are of almost similar age, similar almost similar BMI. Mrs. B has a little more body fat, but Mrs. A has higher blood glucose, which is very rich amongst the fasting glucose, as well as the higher insulin, fasting insulin levels, and also the hormone values are high. So, despite having relatively low body, relatively lower body fat than Mrs. B, why is she having impaired fasting glucose and hyperinsulinemia? The reason would be this is axial skeletal muscle index and the muscle mass. Skeletal muscle mass is low. This is a measure of uh, lean mass, which is lower in this is A as compared to this B. So I'll be talking about how sarcopenia affects insulin sensitivity and how to manage it. We all know that increased adiposity is associated with insulin resistance. However, emerging data indicates that having low muscle mass also has influence on the development of insulin resistance. The changing life expectancy or increasing life expectancy, they have increased proportion of the aging population and their muscle mass declines gradually with age. And after 30 years, and it starts declining at the rate of almost 3% per year after 60 years or maybe at a faster rate. This increase in the body fat also starts occurring at the same time the muscle mass starts going down and both could lead to uh, increased predisposition to insulin resistance and other associated metabolic problems. So sarcopenia which is actually defined as age related loss of muscle mass, muscle strength and physical performance. This leads to increased frailty and loss of independence physical disability and mortality. And we see that in the increasing age, the muscle mass increases, the fat increases to great extent. The several mechanisms of sarcopenia, it could be because of endocrine biological abnormalities, it could be uh, changes in the sex hormones, mitobolic dysfunction, inadequate nutrition and malabsorption also are very important uh, mechanism. Neurodegenerative disorders also tend to develop because of the problems with the neuromuscular junction that the damage to the neuromuscular junction there leads to uh, the blood muscle atrophy. And in situations where there is decreased use, immobility, physical inactivity also leads to decrease in the muscle mass. The several measures to, uh, the ways, ways to measure uh, sarcopenia, three main important factors are muscle mass which can be measured by and appendicular skeletal muscle mass. This can be done by using either CT, MRI, DEXA or bioevidence. DEXA scan is the most commonly used uh, modality for this. The muscle strength is uh, measured by the hand grip strength or the strength of the knee flexion extension and some uh, people also use the peak expiratory flow. The physical performance, there are various questionnaires such as the short physical performance battery usual gauge speed, the simplest, how much person can walk in uh, six minutes, the distance, the time, get up and go test, and the stair climb path. So these are several ways to uh, measure sarcopenia. These are several some definitions, there is a European working group uh, definition, there is a definition by NIH and the Asian working group, group uh, uh, definition for uh, identifying sarcopenia which include all these parameters. This is the simplest, simple or algorithm based on the Asian consensus group. That means first you see that the hand grip strength and the gauge speed. If any of them is abnormal, you go for a muscle mass measurement. And if the muscle mass is normal, then there is possibly there is no sarcopenia. But if the muscle mass is low, then sarcopenia is diagnosed and further management. So, sarcopenia, insulin resistance and obesity. Both are very closely interrelated and all, all three of them are, uh, occur with an increased age and sarcopenia in the presence of obesity is defined as sarcopenic obesity. Several metabolic changes happen in sarcopenia. So this is the picture of a normal healthy muscle, young uh, muscle. 
or we see that there is the metabolic, the glucose metabolism, the protein metabolism, and the lipid metabolism. All are finely regulated. There is increase in the protein synthesis, decrease in the proteolysis, there is increase in the there is more transportation of glucose to the membrane and increase uh, transportation of uh, glucose uh, uptake by the muscle and also lipids are uh, lipids there is increase in oxidation. But with increasing age, so this is a picture of an aging muscle. So what happens here, the process of protein synthesis is less, there is more the proteolysis gets activated and there is increased deposition of lipids in the muscle which leads to several problems. It decreases, which inhibits the translocation of the GLUT4 and there's decreased uptake in the uptake of glucose into the muscle. So all these, the metabolism of glucose, proteins and fat, all this is deranged in a, in a uh, aging muscle. And this is what leads to the problems. We know that skeletal muscle accounts for the major part of the insulin uh, stimulated glucose uh, disposal. Insulin actually inhibits the protein catabolism and it promotes muscle attrition as well. So in the presence of sarcopenia, there is anabolic resistance. That is, even if a lot of amino acids are there, there is, there is resistance to uh, more muscle attrition. Along with that, there is also a resistance to the anabolic action of insulin. So both of these cause a problem. This is mainly caused by intramyocellular accumulation of the lipids and the adipocytes. All of this impairs muscle sensitivity and of course macrophage infiltration and activation of the cellular stress signaling pathways leads need to increase the apoptosis of uh, muscle cells. Now how does uh, uh, obesity and sarcopenia influence the insulin resistance? This is some data from the NHS3 survey which included 14,000 or 14,500 uh, subjects. These bars are individuals less than 60 years and these are the more than 60 years. As we see that, this is non-obese with sarcopenia, obese without sarcopenia, and this is obese with sarcopenia, that is sarcopenic obesity. So uh, this was the, so we see that in this group, in those who were more than 60 years, the prevalence of insulin resistance was over 7%. But in the even in the absence of sarcopenia, mainly in obese individuals, the insulin resistance was quite high. So obesity definitely has a very important uh, role to play in the development of insulin resistance. But the uh, presence of sarcopenia adds on to it. This was the uh, odds ratio of developing sarcopenia uh, insulin resistance in the four subgroups, taking non-obese, non-sarcopenic as the reference. And as we see the obesity increases and the hypopenia increases the odds of uh, developing insulin resistance increase. So this was in the Western population. The similar uh, observations have been made in the Asian population and this is data from the uh, group from the Korean study which included almost 8, more than 8,700 uh, subjects. And as we see that across these groups, the prevalence of insulin resistance increases and it's highest when there is also the presence of sarcopenia and along with obesity. We don't have much data on the Indian population. There is some data, and I'm sure tomorrow uh, you'll get much more uh, idea on the Indian perspective when Dr. Anur Krishna speaks on this. This is the two studies which was uh, done. This was from North India, this was from South India, and we see that the prevalence, uh, these are the cutoff values which have been used based on the European working group, group definition. So it was almost 32, 33 percent in the north and in the south it was in the non diabetes it was almost 16 percent whereas 40 percent in the diabetic patients. And this is our ongoing study and this is a small excerpt from that. Uh, we have 100 uh, non diabetic subjects in this age group, 18 to 50 years, many of are young people. They are not in the geriatric age group. The overall prevalence of sarcopenia, what we saw till now, was almost 44 percent in this age group. And it was higher in age as compared to the females. And we see, the, and we distribute them into the various uh, classes, presence of a combination of obesity and sarcopenia. The sarcopenic obesity was, was present in only 11 percent of our population. 
and uh, we have done other insulin and other uh, inflammatory markers, but that data still is not complete, so that's why I am not uh, showing that here. So, sarcopenia, and coming on to how, what role does that sarcopenia in the development of diabetes? Hypoglycemia itself can be a risk factor for sarcopenia because difference in the insulin signaling lead to decrease in the protein synthesis as I had shown earlier. And in decrease in the muscle mass, that's all called the insulin sensitivity. So it goes both ways, along with chronic inflammation and oxidative damage. Diabetic neuropathy causes damage to the neuromuscular junction. That is why this is one of the factors which may be predisposed to the decrease, uh, predisposed to the development of sarcopenia. Of some studies have been done the prevalence of sarcopenia in patients with uh, type 2 diabetes. Again, there is remarkable data in the Korean population. This was the Korean sarcopenic obesity study. We have around uh, 400 odd patients and with and without diabetes. And we see that across all the age group, the present prevalence of sarcopenia was higher in individuals with diabetes as compared to without diabetes. Similarly, uh, the, when muscle mass, strength and quality were assessed in another study, that was the Health Aging and Body Composition study. We see that in diabetic individuals, the muscle mass was higher or similar as compared to those without diabetes, right, both in men and women. However, the quality, that is, the quality of muscle that is indicated by the strength was lower as compared to those without diabetes. So even though muscle mass was higher, but the muscle quality was lower. So that was similarly in the leg muscles as well as in the arm muscles. And in the same study, the changes in the body composition were observed over a period of uh, six years in older individuals. And we see that over, uh, over the follow-up period, there was total lean mass, trunk lean mass, and appendicular lean mass all went down. Whereas there is total fat mass, trunk fat mass, and appendicular fat mass went down over a period of time. So there is a loss of muscle mass or appendicular mass over a period of time in the presence of diabetes. And hypoglycemia also predicts lower muscle strength. This was demonstrated in the Bible longitudinal study. And the knee extensor uh, strength was significantly lower <coughs> in the highest quartile of HbA1c as compared to the lowest quartile. Similarly, muscle quality was also poor as in the higher quartile. And then what is to be emphasized here is that the difference in the muscle strength between the higher and lower quartile started appearing around the age of 40 years. That is the time when you do not suspect the development of sarcopenia. So that was the time the problem started appearing. And of course, diabetic peripheral neuropathy was found to accelerate this situation. Coming on to the study on Asian Indians, uh, this was a uh, study done in South, South Asians, sorry, not Asian Indians, South Asians in UK. Uh, and the uh, grip strength, which is the marker of uh, muscle function, was compared in three populations white, black, white, black, and South Asians. As we, as we see, that the prevalence of diabetes was highest in South Asians, and the prevalence of low grip strength was also highest in the South Asian population. And the attributable risk with the low grip strength was similar, was more in black and than uh, South Asian, but it was higher than the white European population. And that was similar in males and females. So, higher prevalence of diabetes, lower muscle uh, quality was seen in South Asian population. So, how do we ameliorate that or how do we manage it? Exercise is one of the only major factors which can have some impact on this. So, aerobic exercise, we all know aerobic exercise includes, improves insulin sensitivity, increases mitochondrial density, oxidative enzymes, etc. But resistance exercise, it improves the muscle mass, strength, and physical function. The three main components of sarcopenia. It also improves in body, it causes improvement in body composition and bone mineral density, which all tends to decrease with age, along with improvement.
can see it in the insulin sensitivity and blood pressure. So resistance training would be more suited for patients with particular renal diabetes and sarcopenia. How does resistance exercise work? So this is a very busy slide which indicates the various pathways which are involved in the uh, in muscle action and what we need to see. There are so many things, but just forget the top, just look at the bottom. What are the benefits of resistance exercise? And these are two main benefits. Increased fatty acid oxidation, decrease in the adiposity, increased mitochondrial content, and out here we have increased the protein synthesis, increasing the muscle mass, and basal metabolic rate. So all this, these benefits are there with resistance exercise. It, as I said earlier, it enhances muscle mass protein, your muscular remodeling, and also it increases the muscle cross sectional area. So, our experience with resistance training has been, uh, we have had uh, some experience with this. This is a study which uh, we performed almost over eight, nine years back, and uh, these were 27 patients with diabetes who underwent three months of uh, progressive resistance training. Body composition we did by DEXA, CT scan for muscle area that baseline and that uh, uh, follow up. The main observations were that there was no change in the body mass index as well as the lean body mass, it was a short duration study. However, there was decrease in the waist, hip, mid thigh circumferences, and skin fold thickness, suggesting that there is some change in the circuit in this part. There was no change in the thigh and arm muscle area by CT. But there was significant improvement in the blood glucose, HPA1C, and the lipid profile over a period of three months. And this is the insulin sensitivity in the patients, improved it across the board in all the patients. So, resistance exercise is helpful, and uh, some recommendations moderate to vigorous could be uh, exercise should be done. And 8 to 10 exercises with completion of about 1 to 3 sets of each of 10 to 15 repetitions to be FPT. Minimum of 2, but preferably 3 to 3 non consecutive days per week. So this resistance exercise should be performed and gradually increase in the resistance, lower number of repetitions, and the number of sets. Now, apart from exercise, what else can be done for sarcopenia? Balanced calorie requirement with an aim to increase muscle mass. Protein intake is very important. Protein intake uh, should be high, under 1.5 grams. Protein supplements, particularly leucine enriched, balanced amino acid supplements after performance of exercise. It's more important that rather than before going on for before performing resistance exercise, that better that after performing resistance exercise, maybe half an hour of that these supplements can be given in between meals, not along with meals. So that is going to be much more beneficial in, in developing poor muscle. Creating monohydrate supplementation also has been shown to increase lean mass and improve body strength. Vitamin D should be measured in all and it should be brought to normal levels wherever there is a deficiency. Some data has shown that vitamin D, normalizing the vitamin D uh, levels will also improve sarcopenia some extent. So, summarizing, sarcopenia is becoming a major challenge, a major challenge in increasing the aging population and also it has been recognized more frequently in younger individuals as well. Obesity and sarcopenia are linked together which increases the risk of insulin resistance and its complication. Asian Indians will be more predisposed to develop uh, sarcopenia and uh, its related problem because we inherently have lower muscle mass as compared to the other aging groups and we have excess uh, body fat. Currently, no specific pharmacotherapy is available. Multi-component exercise program with emphasis on resistance training is helpful. Balanced diet with high quality protein and vitamin B would be additionally helpful. Thank you, Dr. Krishna.